everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel. Now today I thought I'd try a swirl that I've never done before. And it's a swirl you don't really see a lot of and I haven't actually found a way that, a specific way that it needs to be done. So the swirl in question is a DNA or helix swirl. Now this was something that was done by the Soap Challenge Club, gosh, I think quite a few years ago. I wasn't in the club then. And it, and it sort of seemed there that it was almost a surface swirl where uh, quite a bulk of the soap was poured and then it was almost like colours were poured on the top and, and it seemed to be sort of like a surface swirl. Other ways I've seen people do it is sort of like in a slab mould where they've poured sort of one bar thick and with the pouring it, it kind of reminds me like a Taiwan swirl which has got an extra swirl going through it. Now I did see some people do using squeeze bottles to just lay, lay lines of colour down, a bit like you would do with a peacock swirl. But for me, it, it kind of reminded me of the Taiwan swirl, so I'm going to sort of do a Taiwan swirl. I wanted to do four colours, and in this tall and skinny mould, I don't have... I thought I had four dividers for it, but that would make sense, I, di I didn't have that. I only had either the option for one divider or two dividers, so that would give me three colours, and I wanted to do four colours. So what I'm going to try and do is, I've put my middle divider in there, and then what I'm going to do with these other colours is I'm going to try and pour them like that. I don't know how successful that would be, it might be better to have just done squeeze bottles, but we'll see. So I'm hoping to get my four colours in that way, and then I'm going to sort of tie one, swirl it, and then do this helix design but I'm going to try and do mine all the way through the soap and I'm sure people have done that I just I did have a look at some videos and things and I, I couldn't see anyone doing it all the way through you know a, a loaf of soap like this as I say so a lot of people doing it sort of the top quarter or in slab mold so I'm going to give it a go see how that goes let's have a look at what I'm using this is caribou blue from Micah Mama and this is Neon Purple from Mica Mama. I've also got Activated Charcoal and Titanium Dioxide. So those are going to be my colours. Fragrance oil, I'm using Paradisiac from Stock Fragrance. It's a nice one that is really good for giving us some fluid trace. And that's going to be, I think, really useful for this technique. Okay, now I've not done it before. So <laughs> I'm presuming because it kind of looks Taiwan swirly that I do need it to be seeing nice and fluid. I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil to this mica here and get that pre-mixed. And with a swirl where I want it to stay nice and fluid, it's even more important in those times to predisperse your micas first of all, so that you can then just hand stir them into the fragrance. Right, so those are all ready. I've got my oils here. I think they might still be a bit warm. Let's look. 90. Probably a little bit warmer than I'd like because I do want this to stay fluid. It's not too bad, actually. Where's my lye solution? Let's have a look. Here's my lye solution. Let's see what temperature I've got on this. Ah, see, 75. I think by the time I've combined those together, I'll have sort of that low, mid-80s that I want. So this is going to be a swirl where I'm going to mix everything in together. Which for me makes it a really quick soap. I don't often get to just mix all my soap up in one go. Right, let's get this blended. And again, I'm just going to be a little bit careful just to make sure I don't overdo it on the blending. I'd rather have it blended not enough and then wait for it to come to a trace than to get it thick. Okay, I think that's going to do me for now. It's probably not fully emulsified yet, but that's fine. Right, so that's about two litres on the side of that jug, so I'm just going to divide that out. That should be about 500 mils each. And I'm just making sure that I give it a good stir before I pour it each time, just in case it's not yet fully emulsified. OK, 
Okay, so let's get these colours mixed up. So this is my activated charcoal, my TD, titanium dioxide, my carry blue blue, and my neon purple. And they're all looking nicely mixed. I'm just going to tip some of the soap up the side of the jug and that way I find the easiest way that I can keep an eye on it and if it splits apart I'll know it's not emulsified yet. But it does actually seem to be holding together so I'm going to add my fragrance. So I'm pretty happy with those. I am going to leave those just for a moment because there's absolutely no trace on them there. They are emulsified and what I'm worried about is because I haven't got dividers that is going that are going to separate the colours, I'm going to potentially end up with them just mixing together. So I do need a little bit of a trace on them so they don't just, you know, just mix up in the bottom. So I'm just going to leave that and I'll come back when I'm happy with those. Okay, I'm going to have a go. So a couple of concerns that I have. I do think this is definitely emulsified. So I am slightly worried I might stop if it starts to mix together. Other thing is when I'm using dividers, I would normally like to hold them down with one hand so that the soap doesn't go underneath. Because of the way I've got to pour this, because I haven't got enough dividers, um, I'm not going to be able to hold it down, so it might have some seepage underneath. The way I would get round that is by pouring a bit of both colour at the same time. So actually, I'm going to... I just want to get these in the order that I want them. So I am going to go in and just do a little bit of... I think this is the order I want them, the black and the purple together. I mean, these lines aren't going to be as lovely and straight as they would be with dividers, but it seems to be going okay. And then the white and the carry blue, carry blue, blue. charcoal is actually thickening up quite a bit there okay I'm gonna leave that as it is and let's get this divider out Okay, 
Right, let's just see if I can get the rest of this soap in. Whoa, still nice and fluid as you can see. Okay, so obviously dividers would have given me nice straighter lines but I'm not going to worry too much. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. I've got a little bit of extra soap, but I'd rather have that and just put those into sort of like some samples than mess that up right so i am now going to do a taiwan swirl type of effect Whoop. now this little skewer may be too skinny i'm going to give it a go I think it's all right actually because I do want these swirls to be close to each other. And you can see how the black is dragging through a bit more. That's because remember that activated charcoal was actually starting starting to thicken up a bit on me. So that's what we would do for a Taiwan swirl and if you were doing a circling Taiwan swirl you would then go around the edge but for our helix swirl we're now going to draw a sort of DNA squirrel like that should have practiced it before shouldn't I I'm just going to go for it so I'm going to go down and then we're just going to loop it up like this up down Okay, and then I need to obviously reverse it the other way. Okay, I think that looks pretty, pretty good. Necessarily say I could see the helix very much. I think it's because my soap is still too f a little bit too fluid to really show the helix swirl. It hasn't really dragged it through that way, but I think it looks pretty cool. I do like the design on that. I'm almost tempted to go through with this thicker one. I don't know. Will I ruin it if I do that? Because I've already been through once. Gosh. Um. I'm not going to do it because this has already pulled everything in the directions I want so I don't think I want to go through and pull it through again I think I'm going to be fine I'm going to leave that there I'm going to leave that to firm up a little bit because it's a bit too fluid now to go in the mold at the moment and then we will put it away and then we'll cut it tomorrow here we are with our soap all out of the mold let's get it cut shall we now this is a design that you want to cut with the bars horizontal so the top of the bar will be along this way rather than down now a lot of people get put off with that if they haven't got like a snazzy cutter like this this is the caterpillar from custom craft tools but if you've got a single wire cutter then you can do this just as easily i don't have a single wire cutter i've only got a multi bar and this if you could if you've just got a multi bar is a bit more difficult you're probably going to have to use a knife or something so what you want to do is first of all is you want to take your loaf and Instead of where we would normally chop it down into individual bars, we're going to chop it into big chunks. And these chunks are going to be the length, the height that you want your soap. So 
mark out your soap, divide it into a reasonable amount. For me, dividing it into four gives me nice size bars that I want. And then once you've got it into your chunks, remember this is going to be the top of your bar. Now mine are probably a little bit shorter than I would normally do them, but that's because when I measured this, I, I don't want to play any extra soap off or anything, but this would make my bars a bit fatter than normal. So to keep the bar size overall about the same, I'm making them a little bit shorter. So I'm actually just going to do three bars on each one of these, which makes them fatter than normal. Okay, and then we'll slice them into individual bars. Yay, whoa, look at that, that's cool, isn't it? That's coming up with a really cool swirl. <laughs> I'm keeping an eye, my battery is showing that sort of like warning. We're getting low, we're getting low. So I'm hoping I can get this cut before we're out of battery. Oh, I really like this. I think it could have been cool, I think if I was doing this for a ch an actual challenge in the challenge club or whatever, I would probably make these bars a bit longer and thinner, I would plan it so that I could do them longer and thinner, so I could try and maybe get a whole like DNA swirl in one of them, but I do, I really like those, they're nice aren't they? And as I said, I'm not entirely sure if I did the swirl right because I didn't see an actual proper tutorial on it and I just saw it really just done as a almost a fill up the soap mould and then do this on the top, but I, all the way through. Wow, I think that's really cool, isn't it? And pretty easy to do. <laughs> Buffed it there. Main thing, nice fluid soap batter. And I'm glad I didn't go through and try and muck up. You know, I was tempted to put that extra swirl through. I'm glad I didn't because I think that would have disturbed the pattern a bit. I am very happy with those. There we are. So yeah, really cool, really like them. So I hope if you're a soap maker that you might have a go at this type of swirl because it was, I'm not gonna say it's the easiest swirl in the world to do, but it does mean that you have to be able to control your trace so it would be a good practice for doing that and let's face it if your trace got a little bit thick you can always just do a, some sort of hanger swirl also as well if you remember i didn't have enough dividers to divide these up properly into the four bits that i wanted so i just used that one divider certainly in tutorials or, or people i'd seen doing this they they use squeeze bottles and all sorts of things to do it so i think there's lots of ways you could get this or a very similar effect anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up because that really does help my channel. And if you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping.